Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So my name is Elena, if you haven't been here before, and I wanted to do a little bit of a different video this week. I usually do sewing tutorials, but this week I wanted to tell you some of the things that I have learned and I would like to pass my knowledge on to you. So just for some background on my sewing experience, I started sewing at a very young age. I remember sewing like little clothes for my trolls, my toy trolls. It's like really embarrassing, but I used to collect them. I literally used to have like over a hundred of them. It was kind of weird looking back, but <laughs> But I had a lot of trolls and I used to like to make clothes for them like in elementary school. My mom would always make costumes for us and so I was always kind of exposed to sewing. We always had a family sewing machine growing up and so I started making my own clothes and I would do thrift flips before they were trendy and cool. But I would go to the thrift store and buy dresses mainly and make them more cute and modern and make them fit me and so that's how i started sewing i haven't really ever been formally trained i'm mostly self-taught and i just love doing it it's something i like to do in my free time so i used to be kind of a lazy sewer and i've gotten a lot better now but the first thing that i want to share is that sewing is more like a puzzle than it is a plant this is kind of a weird analogy that I came up with, but I used to think that sewing was kind of like growing a plant. Like you water it, put it in the right sun, and sometimes it will grow and flourish, and then sometimes it just dies and you have no idea what to do. And I used to think that sewing was kind of like a hit or miss type thing. Like, I'd go into a project or to do a zipper or something and be like, okay, I'll give it my best shot. Like if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't type thing. But I realized that it's not like that. It's more like a puzzle and you just have to work through things. And that kind of brings me into my next point, which is if it's not right, do it again. <laughs> I used to get so impatient with my sewing projects and I just would want things finished and done so if something didn't look very good I would usually just go with it if if I could but the longer that I have sewn the more I have learned that you'll feel a lot more satisfied and proud with your work if you will just redo it right when you notice something's wrong don't wait just pick it out and do it right then my next tip is that Invisible zippers aren't actually that bad. I don't know why, but I always thought they were like this mystical, mysterious thing that you had to conquer. And again, it was like a hit or a miss type thing, but it's really not. You literally just like sew up the left side, match it up, sew up the right side, and you are you got a zipper. And something else that I have done recently is I started using an invisible zipper foot and that has like changed my life. So if you're the type of person where you're scared to do invisible zippers like I used to be, just do yourself a favor and get yourself an invisible zipper foot. You'll thank me later. And I also have a tutorial all about how to put in an invisible zipper if you would like some more instruction on that. My next tip has to do with gathering. Now, gathering is one of those things where there's kind of like a universally accepted way of doing it, which is you put two long basting stitches on your fabric and you pull on it. Well, I thought that the two basting stitches was just kind of like The bougie way of doing it I didn't think that there was really much of a reason besides like oh in case your first thread breaks I just thought 
that it wasn't that important. And so all of my sewing career, I never did two gathering stitches. I only ever did one long one. And as a result, I always kind of had like wonky gathers. Like it would pucker a little bit or it wouldn't be straight. It just like wouldn't turn out good. And so I started doing two basting stitches instead of one and it <laughs> literally changed my life. I realized I was like, oh, so that's why everyone does two. <laughs> so if you want more of a breakdown on that and more information there, I also have a video on that. So it seems kind of like a basic thing, but it's very important. Do two. Do two lines of basting stitch, not just one. My final tip for you is to always, 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 always look for fabric in the clearance section first. I cannot say this enough. I used to not. I was like, well, if it's in the clearance section, it's probably like scraps or it's not that cute or it's not what I'm looking for. No, 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 no. One of the first videos on my channel is a super pretty metallic pinky blue jacquard party dress. It is so beautiful. The fabric is gorgeous, but I literally found that fabric in the clearance section. I went into the store wanting to make a dress. I was just going to get like a basic cotton print, but I ended up going to the back and I found this beautiful fabric and it was it was like, it's the most beautiful fabric I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was like $4 a yard, which is insane. So that's like one of my most golden nuggets to pass on to you is always go look in the clearance section first. You might be really surprised on what you find and who knows, maybe you'll get some inspiration for your next project. I hope you guys enjoyed some of these tips and tricks and I hope you were able to learn some things and hopefully I could pass on some of my knowledge to you and you don't have to make some of the same mistakes that I have for many years. <laughs> if you like this video, please like and subscribe and let me know if you want more like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.